Sean Haney here with RealAgriculture.com and Real Ag Radio. I'm joined right now by Jeff Bennett of Dodland, Saskatchewan. Jeff, how's it going? It's going really good. How are you? Hey, good, man. Great to chat with you. Also, Jeff is a director on the Western Wheat Growers Board as well. Hey, Jeff, uh, I want to talk about the carbon tax. Uh, we saw yesterday, April 1st. It was not April Fool's Day. The government, I was hoping, yeah, I was hoping. Uh, the government decided to continue with its rollout of its increase on of the carbon tax. Uh, how does that sit with you as a farmer? Not real well. I think for myself and being a director on the board, um, it's sort of twofold. One is that we as farmers, you know, we can't pass this carbon tax along, and there's going to be there's going to be costs that you know aren't necessarily direct they're not going to it's just not just the fuel it's not just the natural gas it's going to be getting our products to where they need to be getting the products that we need to put the crop in and keep it healthy um all those aren't really necessarily up front um so it's the hidden part of it that's going to be the major or the majority of what's going to affect us um and the second thing is whether or not we are actually sinners in this you know, there's there's as much data that says that yeah. we are a net zero emitter as we are, you know, polluters in this. And, you know, that's not even taken into effect the uh, that's not even taken into effect the, um, you know, the rest of the situation, too. So, yeah. And, and you know, I think one of the things here is because I've had a couple uh, tweets to me from people outside the agriculture community when I've been tweeting about this because I'm with you on this one. I, I think this is this was an easy one for the government to push this off. Um, is that they're saying, well, hey, listen, look how much fuel prices have gone down. It's actually probably less of a cost today than this would have been six months ago. But I'll tell you what, Jeff, one thing that concerns me is when the economy kind of gets back going here, whenever that is, that's where we're really going to see the cost increase and and, and it's going to be hard to go back. Well, that's, you know, I priced some lentils yesterday. And normally, to get it to within an hour radius of my farm, to get it to be a picked up price, um, it's about a half a cent a pound. And we're looking at a dollar or more already, you know, and that's that's just a small indication. And I don't know if it's because of the carbon tax or if it's just, you know, the way trucking is right now. But I mean, those are the sorts of things that are just going to keep happening. You have these costs that you sort of have as a, a mini budget in your head, and they're sort of blowing out of the water to uh today's new world yeah well it you know the government you know at this point this is definitely a it's definitely a a point of ideology for them in in terms of uh you know fighting climate change was definitely one of the things that they have run on in the last two elections and they've really done a quite a successful job of tying the carbon tax to fighting climate change and when farmers speak out against the against the carbon tax some people jump to oh you're you're just anti climate and, and that is not not the case jeff at all i don't think anybody really sees the effect of the environment weather change or climate change or whatever than a farmer does i mean look, looking at your your place right now you said you got snow and you know right now we we're not i mean i don't think I, I think a d- different term for climate change is, is weather, you know, and definitely the cycles are changing, but that's what they are, they're cycles. And I'm not 100% sure how charging people money is going to affect any of any of the outcome on the weather. They can't even predict the forecast out to 24 hours, let alone know some of these things. So it, it's, you know, it's a definitely a Pandora's box of, you know, communicating your stance on, on, the effect of the weather and the only thing that I will say completely for sure is that a tax is not going to change the weather. Yeah. And, you know, if you look what's going on during COVID-19 here, we've seen a dramatic decrease in the demand for fuel. Uh, in the United States alone last week, uh, Gas Buddy was talking about a 75% decline in the demand for fuel. Uh, we're, we saw in China when they were going through COVID-19 in the outbreak in Wuhan, we saw a dramatic decrease in, in the smog that's in the air. <clears throat> Farmers are not necessarily uh, the biggest contributors here to some of the climate issues that are out there. So taxing them like this just seems to be somewhat uh, misconstrued. Unnecessary. Yeah, it's a good way to put it. But we're having a hard time breaking through, though, in terms of communicating that, though. We're not, it seems like we're kind of spinning our tires a little bit. 
yeah, there's there's definitely a disconnect between you know rural and urban centers, and and I think that's part of it. I mean, <clears throat> look at for us to have to quarantine or self isolate isn't that much different than normal life, and that's just sort of an analogy back, you know, so some of the bigger picture things here too is for me to have to not see anybody for two weeks doesn't really have to change a whole lot of what I'm doing on the farm. Yeah. I've been to your farm. You, you, mm-hmm. You've been prepping you for the... in your truck. I did sleep in my truck. There's a long story to that, Jeff. There's a long story. It made it, let people's imagination uh, run wild on that one. But uh, you, you're, you're, you're right. Uh, I, I said to Bob Lowe, the president of the Canadian Cattlemen's Association last week, that farmers are the original isolationists. Um, but, hey, speaking of that... Um, Tell us a little bit about how does any of this COVID-19 situation and the isolation, social distancing, does it impact your farm this spring at all? Is it on your mind? Um, a little bit, just as far as some of the things you sort of take for granted, go to go to get parts. Now you got a call to get parts. They're sitting outside. Um, but as far as the, like the social part of it, not a whole lot different. Um, I think one of the concerns that that I have, and you know, I, I sort of jumped the gun and got all my stuff on farm very early. But you know, I hope that some of these seed companies have got their stuff. Some of the fertilizer that people are going to need come seeding time. I hope that's all come in, you know, to the retail or to at least at least on land and yeah. across the border. I think that's sort of where we may see a little bit of a a panic set in. Right now, we've got time to get it here, and it sounds like all the borders are still still open for those sorts of goods to cross, but you know, that might change at literally any time. So, well, Jeff, today in our news segment, we talked about parts. Um, you know, that was one of the comments that RME was out with yesterday saying, you know, they're working to make sure they have more parts in their stores than they typically right. would because of this situation. That, and honestly, that was something that was a little bit off my radar. I think that's a good idea. If there's th- something that you think on your farm that you are going to need, and you can't predict everything, but if there are yeah. things that routinely you know you're going to the parts store for, you might want to get it on your farm uh, sooner than later. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah, it's going to be a going to be a different world, I think. And I don't know what the long term ramifications of this are going to be, but it's definitely changing the way some of these short term decision making processes are. Yeah. So carbon tax increase or not, I know you're going to plant a crop. When do you think you're going to get started? Uh, May third. May third. At ten a.m. <laughs> I love I love the accuracy of the prediction. That's that's pretty good. You, you got a future in being a weather guy. Oh, I'm be just as accurate with just as much training. That's that's funny. Hey, we've been talking to Jeff Bennett. Uh, he is a director on the Western Wheat Growers. He is also, a, of course, a farmer from Dodland, Saskatchewan, just outside Kindersley. Hey, Jeff, thanks a lot. Thank you, Sean.